I, I, no, but this, this, if you knew, you would not take that, right? Right, but I don't know. And now I'm just being informed that I'm being told about this. This happens with every currency. I mean, there's a reason we have a thing called the Fool's Gold. Like, <laughs> every currency has people who have degraded coins. Yeah. Or like we have twenties with cocaine powder on them, and then there's like so many that it's okay because judges have twenties. Uh, there are no twenties without cocaine powder. That don't happen. It don't exist. For, for a while, though, that was a problem. And now it's I, I think it's, it's actually a forty in at the mint. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm just saying that when you know whether or not you want that to be true, it's true that like some that you're going to accidentally come into possession of stolen coins, and if you knew that you, if, you, if, you had, if there's any way to get a know that they might be stolen, you carry some both ethical and moral liability and responsibility, but there might be a legal liability depending on. But I mean, one of the concerns is that they, they, um, we can come up with this infrastructure basically to allow people to identify these coins, and we'll end up with effective services. I mean, it's not just the developers who are innovative, also the people stealing coins are, and the hackers are innovative. I agree. And, and they, they will come up with it. <laughs> and so just because we come up with a solution that solves the exact problem that we're facing doesn't mean that the problem's not going to change. But, and then all that infrastructure that we built, now there's just decentralized mixing systems, and, and now we can't really identify it anymore. So, um, now there's, there's a thing that's about the ecosystem if you look at it in the other way. Not as a personal point of view, uh, but as an ecosystem. And fraud will get worse, and the robbery of home will get worse as long as the community doesn't find a way to, to make it less profitable. You gotta attack it on Russia. Yeah. And, and so basically, I think one of the biggest threats that Bitcoin is facing today is the, the incremental insecurity and fraud behavior around Bitcoin, which will disallow it to go mainstream. And I think one of the biggest questions is how can we just go one step further and have everyone have Bitcoin or most people have Bitcoin. I think security is something that I understand. Something that, yes, it gets complicated, but on the other side, it's necessary for the health of the system and people knowing. And is that, I, mean, I think businesses will just layer on top of that, like they'll put your coins in somewhere safe. And you'll decide it's safe because it's got a good processing and it's really good and what have you. And then you'll be able to kind of like tap those in the way we tap a lot of financial instruments. That's fine. That's and I think it's kind of, I think Dan gave the, in this article uh, this example of art being stolen. Yeah, art being stolen, it, it can, continues yeah. to have the same value, but you just can't sell it. Mm -hmm. Because the moment you sell it, it you get caught. So it's kind of a, People will have the Bitcoin there forever. <laughs> well, I think that's interesting. Um, so, may I, can I mention Mr. Shapers, Mr. Trendy Shapers? Probably not. Um, who remembers Pirate Man? Yeah. Right. So, um, he had, right, he was at least related to the service that lets you mine and they paid you how much over? You guys remember? 140%? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, because he's interested in this other thing, but he also had a mining, he had like a mining thing, and they would pay you one point. So you know, we got pools that do 97 percent, 95 percent. There was a 140 percent pool. We didn't have it all the time. Um, if you ask them, please explain your business model. This was the last time I ever spoke to him. Back, he he said, um, "Oh, I have clients that really want." Uh, Version coins. So that's like the only that's the only market I've seen so far for they want coins. They want coins that are unspent. They are unspent. They're totally you know T free coins. Mm -hmm. um, they were generated by the blockchain I see. and they sat there. That's all they ever did. And they were this nameless client that perhaps the SEC will help us put who they are. Um, paid one point four X for those coins. So I think that's interesting. Like there's a market out there for stuff that you know no one's touched. And that brings me to the other aspect. Because I think tainting is, a, and uh, when we were talking about this last time, and, and one of the ways, that even if, if part of the network starts not receiving them, that would be enough because eventually you would want to check if there are any of your bitcoins because it would reduce your options. And that increases value and that decreases the profit from whoever steals it. 
Now, the other aspect, which is anonymity, which we defend so rigorously in, in the Bitcoin community, which, by the way, we don't have it, because we have to send our own passport and every single paper we have at home just so that we can take money out of the Bitcoin uh, process or exchange it for other currencies. So basically, what could we do in terms of uh, anonymity uh, that you can think of uh, where people are willing to give their anonymity in exchange for additional security? But not only in exchange for additional money laundering security for the company itself, but for my security. How, how can I exchange uh, someone's ID? Not ID. Let's think, how can I trust someone I don't know? Uh, with their bitcoins or with their uh, credit card payments for my bitcoin. Bitcoin has engineering towards anonymity and it makes a lot of decisions to try to support it. You know, it's not a continuous, there's this weird like continuous discrete thing. It's like they've done a bunch of decisions to try to support the feature. It doesn't really work. We don't know if we want to try to do more of it or less of it. Or this weird in between oh, space. Yeah. It, is, it is, if there's anything sloppy in the Bitcoin design, this is it. You, you can't like make the protocol more anonymity friendly now because regulators have needs and there there are people that they will call, right? Well, like the, that's my opinion at least. That you're going to go put put out uh, proposals that up anonymity, which is hard to do with the blockchain and uh, just the fundamental way it's constructed. Well, the, the, you know, too big to regulate is kind of the theme of Bitcoin. <laughs> it's like you know, let's say the regulators came down really hard on Gap and on the developers. You know what? There are other developers. <laughs> That's the thing. You know, the whole thing about regulation really comes down to this great quote, which is shoot one, scare a thousand. And um, that's a great policy, except for the fact that it's really hard to model the behavior of a thousand scared people. <laughs> Sometimes they cower in their homes. Sometimes they go get pitchforks. Or <laughs> just commit to get money. Well, that's, 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 that's the thing. That's what makes Bitcoin so slippery. When I said you know, Bitcoin is the internet applied to money, I, mean, I wasn't kidding. You know, the problem with regulating Bitcoin is if you actually gain the system out and you make a bunch of, you know, we're going to go ahead and regulate software, let me tell you, there's a lot of software developers and you'll make more. <laughs> it ain't like digging up the AK-47 in your basement. It's like, you know, go read some books and hang back home too now. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a really, really tricky system to regulate. And of course, where you see the regulation happening is on the choke points, is on the mount docks, is, you know, is on the currency translation points, um, is really on the miners. The miners are going to be really very nice regulation points. This is not a perfect system. This is an ongoing experiment. Everywhere you see the regulatory, everywhere you see a choke point, is where the pressure is going to be applied because it's the only places you can apply the pressure. Everywhere else just makes the problem worse. I think it's uh, important to take advantage of that structure and sort of step in in front of some of the regulatory stuff, allow the show points to sort of take some of the front and sort of, I don't know how many wild players we have here, sort of like tank the aggro. <laughs> <laughs> and let, you know, give the emeralds the room. That is my job. Yeah. 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 Uh, so like, but yeah, so you don't know what's going on to build out all the, the, the fungus to, to avoid sort of a head-to-head confrontation. You don't want anyone to get shot, okay? No matter how many developers it makes, you don't want anyone to get shot. Um, that just means the world is a coin trap. concept in the universe. Someone quick register worlds of coin trap.com. <laughs> <laughs> so, can we talk to you? Okay. <laughs> Having pieces of the cube. So, uh, what, 